it, it does it does get a little bit confusing. Um, however, if you just kind of do it slowly, um, I find that you know you just yeah. Like, but but what? but they said on Tuesday and Wednesday you're going to the preceding day. It for that's only for the people who live in small villages, and right. they they didn't have somebody who was proficient enough to be able to read the Megillah for them in their own town. So therefore they would go into the bigger cities to be able to hear the Megillah. But because they, were coming, because they were coming in only on certain days of the week, so the rabbis wanted to make it easier for them and they allowed for them to uh, tie their going in on a Monday to the reading of the Megillah on a Monday. Right. In other words, they made they gave them the extra, you know, leniency to be able to read the Megillah on the day that they were anyway coming in. Yeah, but it's not a choice anymore. Then they have to, to uh, go on Monday, right? Uh, that's that is correct. Uh, well, yeah. well, well, uh, um, that's not necessarily uh, accurate. It, it's possible that for somebody who lives in a particular in a small town. Right, and he decides that you know what, I want to celebrate Purim with my family that lives in the big city, and we're not going to say that no, I'm sorry, you can't. Um, we're saying we're making an another opportunity available for you. Um, mm -hmm. As you're going to see in the Gemara, we're going to mention in the Gemara that, um, well, not so much in the Gemara, but uh, but, but but Rashi explains uh, the Gemara that when it says in the Mishnah. That you know, this day or that day, um, meaning you'd aleph, you'd base, you'd gimel, those are not a chayva. It's not an obligation that the rabbis are saying that you have to read it on those days. It's that you can read it on those days. Ah, uh, it's an easement. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, just give it another minute. See if anybody else is going to join. Otherwise, we're going to get started. <clears throat> okay. Good morning, everybody. Um, let's start with sharing what I wanted to share with you yesterday. Okay, what I wanted to share with you yesterday is um, a, an opening to, as an opening to Maseches Megillah. We're going to start Maseches Megillah today, although we started yesterday. We're going to start again today from the Mishnah. And um, what this is from the Yerushalmi, the second chapter of the Yerushalmi, uh, Mishnah Dalit. So the last, uh, the last sentence is interpreting a verse that is in chapter nine of the Megillah, where it says, "V'zichram lo Yosef mezaram," that their remembrance of Purim will not disappear from their descendants. So Yerushalmi expounds upon it and says, "Mikan from here." is a instruction that the sages dedicated an entire tractate to it. And what does that mean? It means that because we wanted to take the Megillah, right, and the words of the Megillah, the whole story of the Megillah, and we wanted to make it something that was going to be eternal, something that would be fixed in the hearts and the minds of the Jewish people. So, what we did is we did not make the Megillah into Teresh Ba'al Peh. We made the Megillah into something that would be considered Teresh Ba'al Because why do you make a Meseches? Why do you make a Meseches of Gemara? You make a Meseches of Gemara to take verses from the Torah and expound upon them and to teach based upon them things from Teresh Ba'al Peh. Right, so when I turn, when I take the Meseches Megillah and take verses from the Megillah and expound upon them, what I'm doing is, in a way, I'm raising the status of the book of Megillah, the book, the, the, the book of Esther. Right now, what does it mean that they had to go and do something special to make it into a Mesechta? So, in general, it's known that a Mesechta is never less than three chapters. However, the problem we have with the Megillah, with Maseches Megillah, is that there are not necessarily enough laws and enough Mishnayis that only deal with the actual Megillah and the laws of Purim to make an entire Masechta. So therefore what they did is they added a lot of laws concerning the Beta Knesset and laws of 
the reading from the Torah to be able to make it into a fuller Masechta. Otherwise, it'd be a lot smaller than it is. Now, one of the commentators um, to the to the Yerushalmi, which is the Karman Eida, Karman Eida. So he writes as follows. Um, this is the Karman Eida. He was a rabbi from the 18th century. Uh, he was the chief rabbi of Berlin. Um, and he wrote uh, two commentaries on the Yerushalmi. So in the Karman Eida, he says, when it says Mikan from here, that uh, the rabbis uh, learned to, to create a Masechta, he says, that the rabbis established for the book of Esther and the Megillah, a Masechas before itself, that they should toil and learn in it constantly, which seems to indicate that this is, as I mentioned yesterday, but I didn't quote the source, here's the source that basically um, encourages us to, you know, constantly uh, come back to the Masechus Megillah to learn uh, to learn from it. And as it says, um, you know, from 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 others that uh, the Shinavarov and others say that uh, that this is uh, this is actually a segula for your Shemaim learning this Masechda. Okay, so that is uh, a bit of an introduction. Um, as far as the Masechta is concerned. But with regards to the reading the Megillah itself, so where do we know to read the Megillah itself from? So there are two psukim that I want to just read with you quickly, and then we're going to start the Mishnah. The first pasuk I want to read with you is from chapter 9, verse 28 of the book of Esther, where it says over there, and these days, Niskar and Manasim shall be remembered, and celebrated and from here we'll see in the Gemara it tells us that this is where we learn that the Megillah should be read Niskarim being remembered is by mentioning them by reading the Megillah and they are uh, done which means they're celebrated how through doing um through doing the mitzvahs that are associated with Purim so here we learn from this passage we learn that we should read the Megillah. However, in this passage itself, it doesn't say what day we should read the Megillah. So how do we know what day we should read the Megillah from? So for that, we scroll back up and to, we go to Pasuk Yud Tes. In Pasuk Yud Tes, it reads as follows. Al-Kain, ha-Yehudim ha the Therefore, the Jewish villages who live the who live in open towns, right? Oisim, they make they make this day of the 14th day in Adar uh, into a day of joy and, and festivity and and yamtiv and, and they give packages of food friends uh, to, to, to the to each person to their friend. Now, here in this post in Posigu test, it doesn't mention anything about remembering or reading the Megillah. It just talks about doing, right? Doing, they make. Oisib, they make the day. They do things on the day, such as the different mitzvahs that are mentioned. However, how do we know that this would also be the day that we're supposed to read the Megillah? For, so for that, we go back to the first Pasuk that I mentioned, Pasuk Chavches, and we see that there's a juxtaposition putting together between Niskarim and Nasim. So just like Nasim, they they make, right? They make and they celebrate by doing all the mitzvahs on the 14th, as we mentioned in verse 19, so too the Niskarim is done on that same day. So those were the uh, two things I wanted to share with you before we continue uh, with the beginning of the Masechta, as I mentioned before, although we started the Masechta yesterday, we're going to start it again today, um, you know, primarily uh, to help people who are going to be looking for the video later on. Um, they can be able to find it by just going to the video that's uploaded on the Megillah 2a, as opposed to having to go back to Chagiga and look at the last stuff of Chagiga that we did and then try to find over there the beginning of the Masechta. So let's start from the Mishnah. Says the Heilige Mishnah, Megillah Nikras Aleph, the Megillah is read or can be read on the 11th, be it base on the 12th, be it Gimel on the 13th, be it Dalad on the 14th, be it on the 15th, le Pachas Yisai, not earlier than that and not later than that. Continues the Mishnah, Krach in Hamukapu Chaimah, Mimbeis Yeshua Bindun, those cities that 
were uh, surrounded by walls in the times of Reb Shuman Nun. So they read it, Kairin Betesvav, they read it on the 15th day. Okay, that's the 15th mentioned in the Mishnah. People who live in the villages in the large towns, they read, they read this, the Megillah on the 14th. Ella, however, there's an exception made for the people who live in the small villages who will not have a expert that can read for them the Megillah in their small village. So therefore, they would need to go to the big cities to be able to hear the Megillah. So we say that for them, we make an exception and we can make the day of reading the Megillah earlier to the day that they come to gather in the bigger cities. Why would they gather in the bigger cities? They would gather in the bigger cities because the Chachamim established that on Mondays and Thursdays, the Bezdin should sit and be able to help each person with their business matters or other matters that they need to have adjudicated. And since these were the days, Monday and Thursday, that were already established for people to come in from the villages to the big cities, we said that, that that will also be the day that when they're already in the big cities, they can hear the Megillah read by an expert. So, Ketzad, how does this work? So it works as follows. The first case we're going to bring is a case where it works out perfect for everybody. If the 14th day of Adar falls out on a Monday, so then, the villages and the large towns, everybody will read the Megillah on that day, on the 14th, on the Monday. And those residents who live in a world in a world city, so they will read it on the fifth on the 15th day of Adar. That would be on a Tuesday. Now, if what happened is that Purim fell out on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, and we have a problem for the villagers because they've just come to town on yesterday, on Monday. So we don't want to make them come back in again on Tuesday or again on Wednesday. So we say, what will happen is not all people will be reading on the same day. The people from the villages will be given permission to read their day, that they, they read the Megillah a day earlier on Monday. And the large towns who have these uh, Bali Kriya that can read the Megillah for them, they will read it on the actual day, on Tuesday and or Wednesday, depending on when uh, Purim falls out. But either way, it's going to be on the 14th day of of Nice of uh, Adar itself, and the people in the walled cities, they're going to read it the next day, uh, which will be the 15th day of Adar. What happens if it falls out on Thursday? Holy is Pachamishi, the 14th day falls out on a, on a Thursday. So then, it will be the same thing as on Monday, that the villages and the large towns will read it on that day. On the fourteenth, and the people surrounded in the, uh, with with a wall, they will read it the following day on a Friday, which is going to be the fifteenth. Holy is erev Shabbos. If Purim falls out, which is the fourteenth, falls out on a Friday, so now for we're going to have the people from the villages. They're going to come in on Thursday, the day before which is the day, the Yema Knisa, and they're going to read it then. And here, what will happen is, the guys who live in the large towns, who ordinarily would read it on the day of Purim on 14, continue to do so. However, the people who are living in the surrounding, uh, the, the, the cities that are surrounded by walls, instead of reading it on the following day, on Shabbos, which would be the 15th, they bring it a day earlier, and they would read it on the 14th, together with the people in the large towns. And not that they would have to come into the large towns, but that they would be reading it on the same day. And this is because, as we'll learn later on in the Gemara, that there's a particular decree from the rabbis that one is not allowed to read the Megillah on Shabbos. So therefore, they would make it for the people who are living in the walled cities to make it a day early on Friday. What happens if... Purim falls out on Shabbos, Holy use for Shabbos, then what would happen is as follows. When you have the villages and the large cities, what would they do? Both of them would read it on Thursday, the day of everybody coming together. But the people who, have, who are living in the walled cities who don't have a problem because it's not Shabbos, 
right? Because 15th day would be on a Sunday, so they would read it on the next day, on the Sunday. What about if Purim fell out on a Sunday? If Purim fell out the day after Shabbos, which is Sunday, so then, this is the one case where you have the village people from the villages who would come and read it all the way back on Thursday, which was the previous day of assembly, which that would work out to be the 11th day of the month of Adar. And by the people who lived in the large cities, they would read it on Sunday itself, which would be the 14th. And the residents of the walled cities would read it on um, Monday, which is the 15th. Now, one thing is clear. There is only one day for a Jew to read the Megillah. Now, depending on who you are and where you are, that day may be a different day. So the people who are living in the walled cities have a different day than the people living in the uh, large cities. But nevertheless, right, the person living in the walled cities doesn't have the choices of reading on 11, 12, 13, 14, or 15. He can only read it on the 15th. The person living in the large city cannot choose 11 to 15. He's got to read it on the 14th. The person living in the villages is the, is the one to whom we say that you have one day a year that you can read it, when that you can read the Megillah, and that day is going to be depending on when Purim falls out, when Purim falls out in, in, in on a day of the week that would require you to make it a day earlier, that's the day that we're giving to you to read the Megillah. Now, a couple of us have a have a question. Yes, we, yes, yes. Um, I guess Yisrael, why don't you go first? Okay, you're you're muted, Yisrael. You're muted. Go okay. ahead, Robert. I uh, intended to uh, get attention, the rabbi's attention for uh, for you, not for me. Oh, thank you. All right. I appreciate that. So listen, so I just want to understand. Thank you, Yisrael. Um, rabbi, I guess part of what I'm trying to understand is because of the variety of days or the spread of days, one is my thinking is, again, because this is a rabbinical, uh, essentially, decreed holiday, there's flexibility versus when you would have Yom Kippur or Rosh Hashanah or anything else. So again, I, I, I guess I don't understand why there is this variety of dates. It really doesn't matter if it's a walled city or an open city or whatever, relative to one, if there's the assembly, I mean, being going to the, going to the, um, for the assembly. But aside from that, I just don't understand the rationale why there there is such a lengthy discussion as to the dates relative to some contradictions and then corrections. It's almost like going to Kagiga again, where we have to have this again, this point and counterpoint relative to praying. So I just, you know, why it could be so much simpler and yet it's, it's you know, it is, it's elongated, you know, the, the discussion and the counterpoint. Everybody's got to get their two cents in on it, I guess. But, you know, that's part of egos and who's on top and who's first and who's second. So anyways, I just I just wanted to, to share that sort of frustration of, you know, inquiry as to why we have to spend so much time when you can have it for one day or, you know, if there's an issue of an assembly that that is, again, a, you know, gives you leeway. So that's what I'm trying to articulate. OK, so um, it's it's a, it's a good question. Um, and it's not just a question that's limited to this. It's, it's a question that's limit, that, that, that extends to all areas of the Talmud. And what the Talmud um, accomplishes is it helps you to analyze things and to seek the truth in the same manner that the Jewish people have been doing for 3,000 years, which means to say that we do not want to take anything for granted. It's something we call critical thinking. Critical thinking is where we don't make any assumptions. We question everything. And Correct. the advantage of doing that, if you remember from Chagiga, 
where we said about a, an Am Ha'aretz is believed about himself when he immerses into the mikvah for Tumas Mes, we said, because we put him through the ringer at the beginning, then ultimately at the end, we believe him because we know that he's done it properly. If we go through this elongated way of learning, then we have a really good handle on what we've learned and we can deduce other things from it and it gives us a, a, the kind of mind that is sharp, that can really learn one thing out of another. When we have, for example, a complicated question in halacha, right? And the Talmud doesn't discuss it. So for example, electricity or things of that nature or things with regards to medical ethics. What one has to be able to do is to go back and look at what is said and extract from it by principles of hermeneutics and how we exegete from these from these uh, from these texts and be able to come and make a a strong case for the halacha to be one way or the other. And so, therefore, although initially it's it's a bit elongated and sometimes it can be you know, seemingly pointless, but it's never pointless. There's always a, a reason why we go to the extremes to be able to establish things firmly and say, now anything that I derive from this won't have a potential um, uh, hiccup because it was already addressed. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it, it makes sense. I mean, essentially what we're saying is we do this argumentation because at the end, we have been meticulous in trying to understand the rationale as to what we can should do relative to the prayer or the holiday. So again, it's just a process of saying we've covered all the bases and okay. eventually this is, the, this is the end product. So there's no questioning in the future relative to it being a sloppy you know, process that we've been involved in. That is correct. Because if we didn't do this, then... <laughs> it's bad enough that we have two Jews and three opinions, but if we right. didn't do this process, we'd have, you know, countless opinions and nobody being able to really conclusively prove one way or the other, or the other because we'll say, well, the Gemara didn't address it, so we don't know. But if the Gemara comes along and addresses even extreme cases, we'd be like, uh, you see, the Gemara did address it, and if it said in the most extreme case such, we can deduce from that in a lesser case that the halakha would be such. And so that, that's why that's why it is actually helpful that it's done in this manner, uh, despite the sometimes frustration that comes along with it. Um, okay, moving along to the Gemara. It says the Gemara, um, the first thing that we mentioned in the Mishnah is that the Megillah can be read on the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, and so on. So Megillah, the Christ, Biud Aleph, so asks the Gemara Minalan, from where do we know these dates? As it will become clear, Yudalad and Tesvav are explicitly stated in the Megillah. But from where do we know that we can extend this to Yud Aleph, Yud Beis, and Yud Gimel? Frag the Gemara Minalan, you're asking a question, from where do we know this? This is as we intend to explain later that it's that the sages were lenient with regards to the villages and allowed them to come in earlier to the day of the assembly. In other words, when I ask the question of Minalan, for where do you know this? It seems that the premise is that the Yud Aleph, Yud Beis and Yud Gimel that you mentioned in the Mishnah are actual obligations that you have to read it on the 11th, 12th, and 13th, just like you're obligated to read it on the 14th and the 15th. So the Gemara is answering to that premise that like your premise is wrong because the Chachamim never said you're obligated to read it on the 11th or the 12th or the 13th. The rabbis were only saying that they were lenient and they were making it possible to read it on the 11th, 12th. So to ask Minalan seems to be out of place. And what's the reason why the rabbis were lenient to allow you to read it on the 11th, 12th, and 13th? They 
enable this so that you could provide water and food for the Su'udas of Purim for their brothers in their ta- in these small towns. So therefore, the Gemara is asking, what was your original question, Minalan? What were you asking? Where do we know this? So the Gemara responds, Anan Hachikamrinan. This is what we meant when we were asking Minalan. <coughs> Let us examine this. Let's explore. We must say that all of the dates listed in the in the Mishnah must have been established by who? By the Anshe Knesset Agadola. Why? Because the Isal Kataitach Anshe Knesset Agadola, you dalad with Tesvav Tikkun, if you would assume that the 14th and the 15th were the only dates that were established by the Anshe Knesset Agadola. And that's it. And they didn't allow for any other days. So then, also Rabbanon, Ba'akri Takanta, the Sakino, Anshiknes Agadela, would you have the rabbis coming along and uprooting a uh, an enactment passed by the Anshiknes Agadela? That doesn't make sense. They're not allowed to do that. How do we know they're not allowed to do that? A later group of rabbis who were discussing in the time of the Talmud whether or not uh, you can have extra days, 11, 12, and 13, when a much earlier um, uh, Bezdin, meaning the Anshei Knesset Agdela, which were at the end of the first temple, the beginning of the sepul- second te- temple period, that wouldn't be possible. It wouldn't be possible for us to come now and <laughs> to change what they established in, in that time, if it was only 14 or 15. Because we've learned in a Mishnah, aim based in Yochel of Batel, based in Chavei One court cannot come and override the rulings of another court, Ella in Cain, unless... Godl Mimenu, it is superior to them, in wisdom and in numbers. In in, in which case, um, since the Anche Knesset Agdullah, we've never had a Bezdin that has been bigger than them in Chachma or in Minyan, in, in wisdom or in numbers. So therefore, obviously, we couldn't have come and up uh, and uprooted what they've established as the only two days, 14th and 15th, Elapshita. So therefore, it's obvious we must say, Kulu, all the dates, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, they were all Anshiaknes Takino. They were all established by the Anshiaknes Zagdela. And if that's the case, if the Anshiaknes Zagdela were the ones that established all of these dates, so then the assumption is that they must be alluded to within the Megillah itself. Because remember, the Megillah was written in the time of the Anshikin and So Heicha Remiza, where are these uh, Where are these dates alluded to in the Megillah itself? That's what we're asking. Yes, the 14th and the 15th are explicitly stated in the, the Megillah. However, our assumption is that there must be a place in the Megillah where 11, 12, and 13 are also alluded to in the Megillah. Okay. Bye-bye. Yes question yes um is there a problem for someone who lives let's say in a small village okay the 14th falls out on a thursday uh, sorry on a friday Mm -hmm. okay for him he has to read it on thursday yes thursday is a fast day Mm -hmm. so aren't you mixing a day of Puanut, which is the fast day, with a day of Simcha, which is, you know, uh, to me, it's sort of like, you know, contradiction. So it's a good question. And I don't know the answer because I haven't seen it addressed, but I will definitely look into it and hopefully come back with an answer uh, to you for you tomorrow. Um, it's a very good question. Um, you don't want to mix um, something which is associated with sadness together with something which is associated with the simcha together. So therefore, if it would fall out in such a way that Purim uh, fell out on a Friday, and then Tanis Esther obviously is on a Thursday, and you're going to tell this villager to come in and fulfill both obligations, the Tanit and the reading of the Megillah on the same day, seems to be contradictory. It's a good question, and um, I will look into it. Yes, Israel. 
Yeah, uh, my, my question uh, is, or it's an observation, that with regard, for example, to the Regalim or the Yamin Naraim, I mean, the, uh, uh, th those are uh, stated in, in, in the Torah explicitly, okay? There are no, in general, there are no leniencies uh, uh, because those those special days are to be uh, respected on, on those explicit days. Here, there are, because of certain circumstances, there are, there are leniencies, which suggests that the status of the Megillah is not, a, uh, as we, I guess, alluded to in, earlier in the discussion, that the, uh, that the Megillah is, is, since it's forbidden, in origin, then, then, then the uh, the Bezdin can uh, make leniencies uh, uh, at their discretion. Is is that a valid observation? Yes, uh, that that is correct. That is correct. Okay. So, um, but Blina, I will I will try to get back <coughs> to, to uh, for, with Ezra's question. I will try to find an answer. Okay. Um, remember, this is this is all theoretical, as we will uh, see in the Gemara later on. Um, that now that we are um, doing everything based on a fixed calendar, these uh, these uh, what do you call it? Flexibilities are, are, are no longer um, considered valid. In other words, it's only the fourteenth and the fifteenth Bisman um, Hazer that we can read the Megillah. But um, so we're talking about in theory. Okay. Omar Rab Shemen Bar Abba, Omar Rabbi Echanon, Rab Shemen Bar Abba said in the name of Rabbi Echanon, you're asking a question of where do we have it hinted to at least in the Megillah that we could read it on these additional days, 11, 12, and 13. So he says, we learn it from here. Omar Kra says in the Pasuk, Lekayim es yimei hapurim ho'ele bizmanehem that they were going they were to establish these days of Purim in their times. So now the word Bismanehem seems to be um, superfluous. You don't need it. So the fact that we not that you don't need to say that they should be read, that they should be established in their time, but the fact that you use the plural term, which means their times, plural, that seems to be extra, and that would teach me that there are extra days that are included in um, reading the Megillah. That many dates were designated for the observation of these, uh, of these laws, i.e., such as reading the Megillah, not just on the 14th and 15th, but also on the 11th, 12th, and 13th. So the Gemara challenges this, and Frank the Gemara, we need this term, for the law itself. Why? Because there are more than one date. There's more than one date that you could read the Megillah on. You could read it on the 14th and on the 15th. So therefore, having a plural term, um, is required to tell us those two dates. How could I use it to teach me additional dates? So the Gemara counters and says, in Cain, even if I'm going to assume like you, that there are two dates, the 14th and the 15th, and that's why I need a term that is plural, le macro, zman, nevertheless, excuse me, let me go back. Again, hi, mi boy, the word is manehem, I still need for the 14th and the 15th. So in other words, sometimes when you take a word, right, it has to be free if you want to learn something extra out of it, since I'm going to use that word itself, bismanehem, to teach me about the 14th and the 15th. So therefore, um, therefore, you cannot use it. It's not free to learn anything out from it. <clears throat> so the Gemara says, there's still a part of the word that I can use because we suggest in Cain, Lema Krosman, the Pasuk could have just said, Zman that uh, the positive says is hapurim bisman. Okay, so why does it have to say bismanehem? 
So my is money hem. What's the purpose of saying this money hem, which is plural, zman tuva? You're going to have many times more than the ones that are mentioned in the Megillah. Break the Gemara. One second. I still need the plural form itself. Why? To teach me a new limud. What's the new limud? If I would have only said bisman, and in the Megillah it says the 14th and the 15th, I would have said that you could choose. If you want, you could do it on the 14th. If you want, you could do it on the 15th. Meaning, whether you live in a walled city or you live in a large city, you can choose to do it either on the 14th or on the 15th. I need to have a special verse, a special word that says Bismanehem in their time to teach me like that the time for this one, meaning the people living inside the walled cities, is not like the time for the unwalled cities, meaning the walled and the unwalled cities have two distinct times. You can only read in the time that has been designated for you. Frank the Gemara in Cain, if so, lay across Manam. I could have learned this out if the verse would have just said Zmanam in their times, in their times would mean not this the, this one's time, it's not like that one's time, and vice versa. So my money hem, why do I have the extra uh yud and the hay, right? Why do I have this money hem? Shmas minokulu. So from the from this we learn all the three things that we mentioned. Number one, it should be done in time which time the 14 and the 15 and bismanam which teaches me that this one's time is not like that one's time and bismanam comes to teach me that there are extra days also included um that uh the megillah is alluding to that you could read on the 11th the 12th and the 13th right so frank the gemara okay fine you're coming along and you've given me a source where it says bismanehem, which includes more than the 14th and the 15th, but Ema, let us say, zmanem tuva, a lot more than just the 11th, 12th, and 13th. Let's add more. Let's maybe extend it to the full month or at least more than 11th to 12th and 13th. So the Gemara answers when it says in the Pasuk zmanehem, it has to be dumya dismanam. It has to be similar to the days that are derived from a more basic form of the word, which is zmanam, which is, we said that the one, that each one has a distinct day, the 14th is not like the 15th, and the 15th is not like the 14th, meaning the walled cities are not like the unwalled cities and vice versa. And there, that word, bismanam, only teaches me about two days, right? So mazmanam trade, just like zmanam is uh, regarding two days, the 14th and the 15th. So afzmanayhem, even though you have a longer version of this word, it's all it's not going to teach me more than another two, which is tre, uh, which will be the, which we'll see which days those are going to be. Frank the Gemara, okay. You're saying that we should only add another two. Let us just say that these are the 12th and the 13th. So how do we know that the 11th is included? So the Gemara answers that the reason why we don't use Bismanehem to teach me the 12th and the 13th, but rather to teach us the 11th and the 12th is Rav Shmuel by Yitzhak. It's as Rav Shmuel by Yitzhak taught us elsewhere that what it gimels man kihila la kohelhi. The 13th day of Adar was a time when all the Jews assembled. Why did they assemble? Assembled already what? To wage war against all those who came to fight against them. And where is the 13th mentioned in the Megillah? It's mentioned in the Megillah that we're told that on the 13th day, the Jews gathered together to fight against all those who wanted to harm them. So since the Megillah already mentions the 13th as a day of gathering, so the Megillah already has alluded to the fact that the 13th is a day when you could read the Megillah. So therefore, it doesn't need an extra um, additional derivation to be able to teach me that the 13th is a day that you can read the Megillah. This still doesn't answer Ezra's question, right? Even though we're saying, based on Reb Shmuel Barab Yitzchak, that the, the 
13th day was considered by the Megillah a day of gathering, right? So therefore, it doesn't need an extra uh, reboot to tell me that it's a day that you could read the Megillah. We have a separate question from Ezra, which is, but you're kind of mixing two things. You're mixing the fasting, right? Which is something which is uh, evokes feelings of sadness with a time of Simcha, which would be reading the Megillah. Megillah. So I still have to get back to that answer. But so the Gemara is saying, just as Rabbi Shmuel by Yitzchak said this idea that the 13th day is as Mankil Lakoil, and therefore it doesn't need an ex a, a, a specific derivation, Hachanami. So here too, the same principle can apply. You'd give most Mankil Lakoil. Since we say that the 13th day was a, da a day when everybody assembled, so you don't need an, a, a scriptural derivation for it. So therefore we'll use the extra two that we're going to learn from Bismanehem and we're going to apply them to the 11th and the 12th. Okay. Frank the Gemara of Ema, let us say Shitsar Veshivsar. Let's say that it's the 16th and the 17th that are coming to be included or alluded to by the Megillah when it says Bismanehem. Why do we go earlier? Why not go later? So the Gemara says, because we learned this from, from, from the Pasuk in the Megillah, where it says, it says in the Pasuk, it, uh, it shall not pass. We learn from this, the Kabbalah, that what? That the Megillah cannot take place after the times prescribed in the Psukim. The Psukim say, Yudalad and Tesvav, and then in the Megillah it says, Veloyavar. Veloyavar means do not go past the 14th and the 15th day of the month. So that's why we don't add the two on the end. We, we bring them before on the 11th and the 12th. That is the answer of who? Reb Shemen. Or is it Reb Shemen? If I'm not mistaken. Um, Reb Shemen Bar Abba, in the name of Reb Yechner. Okay, that's his opinion. Now, we're going to bring another opinion of where we learn out that you can read it earlier from, where it's alluded to in the Megillah. Reb Shmuel Balachmeni Omar, Reb Shmuel Balachmeni says that we can learn it, Amakra says in the Pasuk, Tayobim Asher Bahem Hayuhudim, the Pasuk says, like the days on which the Jews rested, which was the 14th and the 15th. Now, Seemingly, the verse could have said that we're going to celebrate the, um, on the 14th day and the 15th day, which are the days that the Jews rested. What does it mean, like the Jews? You could just say, yamim, the days that the Jews rested. Why does it say kayamim? So the Gemara says, Rishul Benachmeni says, yamim kayamim, by adding the word chaf, like the days, that teaches me just like the 14th and the 15th. Um, are uh, are used to read the Megillah. So there are other days like them, but not identical to them, that can be used for reading the Megillah. The rabbi used Aleph, used base. This is to, to include two extra days, meaning the 11th and the 12th. So the Gemara asks the same question that we asked before. Let us say that it refers to the 12th and the 13th, not the 11th and the 12th. So I'm Rebbe Shmuel Bar Yitzchak. Rebbe Shmuel Bar Yitzchak says, as we mentioned before, in Gimel, Sman Kila Lakolhi, that the 13th day was a time when all the Jews assembled. So therefore, we don't need an extra scriptural um, uh, addition to learn it out from, um, and therefore we can use it. It's free to use for the 11th and the 12th. The Gamar still asks, like we asked before, let's say the, the 16th and the 17th. And the Gamar, like we answered before, it says, Yavr shall not pass. And this teaches us you don't go past the 14th and the 15th. So now, now that we've presented two possible uh, places where we can learn it out from. You have Rabbi Yechanan and Rabbi Shumar Bar Nachmeni. So the question is, Rabbi Shumar Bar Nachmeni, my time alone, Oma, maybe it's Monday him. Why is Rabbi Shumar Bar Nachmeni not happy to learn out from the drusher that we quoted the name of Rabbi Yechanan or from Bismane uh, him? And for the Gemara, Zman, Zmanon, Zmane him, Le Mashma. In the opinion of Reb Shmuel Bar Nachmeni, have you ever uh, uh, seen in chess, there's something, there's a tactic called overloading, okay? That means you have one piece that is protecting 
uh, too many things, right? And so therefore it's overloaded and it, and it ends up caving because it can't protect everything. Rabbi Shmuel and Nachmeni is saying, you, you're, you're trying to learn too much from one word. You're trying to say that you're learning from one word, zman, zmanam, and zmanayhem. That's three limudim from one word. He says, that doesn't, that's not acceptable to me. That's why he went and he looked uh, for another source and he found um, Kayyamim. Instead of saying Yamim, it's Kayyamim, and we learned it out from there. So the question now is in the reverse. Reb Shem, Shem and Bar Abba, who quoted the name of Reb Yechnan, so my time only Kayyamim. Why doesn't he learn it out from the word Kayyamim, like the days as Reb Shemul Balach Meili learned it out? So Amalah, so the Gemara answers and says that Reb Shem and Bar Abba could say to you, when uh, that term, like the days, was to teach me a special thing about future generations, which means just like the first year when the Jewish people celebrated, when they rested from their enemies, they did it with a lot of joy and they did it with a lot of vigor, etc. So too, in future generations, when you're going to celebrate the 14th and the 15th day of Adar, you should do it just like they did it in the original time when they rested from the enemies. And that's why Rabbi Shem ben Abba, ben Abba, ben Abba, ben Abba that didn't want to learn it from this uh, yom, from, from the Yomim Kayyomim Limut that uh, Rabbi Shmuel ben Achmeni presented. Okay, so that's uh, both opinions explained. So now, question is, who is the Tana of our Mishnah? Because if you look at the Mishnah, it seems to be a Mishnah without any, uh, with, without any um, identified Tana. It doesn't say who the Tana is. So, Amar Rabbi Baba Chana, Amar Rabbi Yechnan, Rabbi Baba Chana says in the name of Rabbi Yechnan, Zu Divrei Rabbi Kiva Stimta. It's, it's like an, an, on, an anonymous uh, Mishnah in the view of Rabbi Kiva. Okay? Sometimes uh, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi who put together the Mishnah words, compiled the Mishnah, and wouldn't mention who the Tana is. So we're saying this is one of those Mishnahis that is in accordance with the opinion of Rebbe Akiva. Rebbe Akiva is the Tana of the Mishnah. The Dorish, because Rebbe Akiva is the one who learns Zman, Zmanam, Zmanehem, just like we mentioned in the Gemara, that we learn out from the word Bismanehem, these three things, these three Limudim of Zman, Zmanam, and Zmanehem, right? Uh, time means uh, the 14th and the 15th that are mentioned in the Megillah. Smanom teaches us that the 14th is not like the 15th, and the 15th is not like the 14th. Each uh, city has to do it in accordance with what which was set for them. And Ms. Manihem comes to teach me that we extend it to the 11th, 12th, etc. So, that's the view of Rabbi Akiva. Ravel Kachomim Rabbi Echnen tells us that in his opinion, the Chachamim's view is that they disagree with Rabbi Akiva. That according to Rabbi Yechnon, the Chachamim hold that you can only read it on the 14th and the 15th. They do not agree with Rabbi Akiva, who says that there's this drosha of Zman, uh, Zmanam, and Zmanehem, which helps me include 11, 12, and 13. Now, this is Rabbi Yechnon's view. The Gemara challenges Rabbi Yechnon's view and says, perhaps you're wrong. Perhaps the author of the Mishnah is not Rabbi Akiva. Basically, they raise an objection uh, uh, to Rabbi Yechnon's statement from the following Brisa. Om Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda said, A Masai, when are the villages allowed? To read the Megillah early in the 14th, Bizman Shashanim Kitiknon. It's only during the time when the years are fixed properly, meaning by a Bezdin, and it was done Apiriya. So then we saw Shrin Alad Mosan and the Jewish people were living in their land. And then in that time, says Rabbi Yehuda, that's when you're allowed to read the Megillah on these different days. But in the current era, since people look at the date on which the Megillah is read in order to figure out when Pesach will fall, because they have no question about whether there's going to be a full month or a 
a, a non full month. In other words, whether Adar is going to have 29 days or 30 days, right? They know because the, the calendar is already fixed. So they say, oh, today is the 14th. Tomorrow is the 15th. In a month from now, it's going to be Pesach. And what's going to happen as a result of that, that is if you're going to start playing around and telling people that you can really read the Megillah a day earlier or two days earlier or three days earlier, people may forget, come to Shul, hear the Megillah and say, oh, the Megillah is read on the 14th. Okay, so now I know what Pesach is. And then they'll end up celebrating Pesach on the wrong days and end up eating chametz when it's really Pesach. And so because Bismar Azeh, we don't, uh, we're not Mekadish, the month, what would happen when they would establish the month uh, uh, by, by sight? The Bezdin would send out messages or messengers all over to tell people when Rosh Chodesh was so that everybody should know what Pesach is. But that's not going to happen nowadays because the Bezdin are not establishing when Rosh Chodesh is anymore. So they're not sending out these messengers anymore. So the point of reference that people will use is the time that they read the Megillah. That's why Rabbi Yehuda says that the only time when we could have read it on 11, 12, and 13, right, is when we were being, when we were sanctifying the moon, Api Re'iya. So, now, yeah, so now, since this is when everybody looks to decide when to when Pesach is going to fall, and Karen El Oisa El Abisman. So now you're only allowed to read it um, on in its proper time, which is the 14th and the 15th. So, what about this Brisa? Again, we brought this Brisa to challenge Rabbi Yechanan. So the Gemara says, Rabbi Yehuda, Ali Bidaman, this Brisa of Rabbi Yehuda, who does he go according to? Again, Rabbi Yechanan has presented two positions one of Rabbi Akiva. When did Rabbi Akiva live? Rabbi Akiva lived after the Beis HaMikdosh. So, since it was after the Beis HaMikdosh, and Rabbi Akiva is saying that this is the halacha in terms of when you may, excuse me, when you may read the Megillah on 11, 12, 13, 14, or 15, and since Rabbi Akiva says that he follows the drasha of Bisman, Bismana, Bismanehem, therefore, it seems that Rabbi Akiva holds that even Bismar Azeh, this flexibility is still available. What was the, according to Rabbi Yechanan, what was the Chachamim's view? The Chachamim's view was that it makes no difference whether it's Bismar Azeh or whether it's in the time of the Beis HaMikdosh. According to Rabbi Yechanan, the rabbis outright rejected this notion of being able to read it on 11, 12, 13. They said that it's only on the 14th and the 15th. So now, Rabbi Yehuda who makes a distinction between Bismana Bayis and when the Mekadosh Apiriya, when they sanctify the moon by sight. And nowadays, when we go according to the calendar that's, a very, that's already established, so who does he go according to? If you're going to come along and say that this Rabbi Yehuda, this price of Rabbi Yehuda goes according to Rabbi Akiva. So, Afila Bismana Zeh, Isa Lahayta Kanta. Then, because according to Rabbi Akiva, this ordinance permitting the villagers to read earlier applies even in this current area, in this current time. So therefore, uh, it cannot be that he goes according to Rabbi Akiva. Then if it's not going according to one, it's got to go according to the other. So seemingly that would have to be according to the Rabbana. But Obismat Shashonim. And yet he, who's he? Rabbi Yehuda maintains that the period when the people are establishing the calendar properly by the Bezdin and the people are living in Eretz Yisrael, they can read it from 11th to the 14th. So this seems to contradict uh, Rabbi Yechanan. Why? Because we cannot have Rabbi Yehuda and his b'risa fitting in with either Rabbi Yechanan, excuse me, with either the Chachamim or Rabbi Akiva. You lose both ways, right? 
If you try to fit it in with Rabbi Akiva, it doesn't work because Rabbi Akiva holds that Bismarazer, it still applies, and Rabbi Huda says it doesn't apply. And if you try to fit it in with with the Chachamim, it doesn't work either because the Chachamim say it it never works. And Rabbi Huda says it does work when the Yidin are living in the land and we're being establishing the month according to the uh, according to the signing. So this is a refutation of the view of Rabbi Yechanan. And therefore, we reject Rabbi Yechanan's view that, uh, that the views, that the way he presented it, is not accurate. That's not, that's not going to be the views of the Chachamim and Rabbi Akiva. So therefore, uh, it's a problem. However, comes along the Gemara to save the day and says... Ikida Amri, there are other people who say that actually there's a different version of how this conversation went, and according to this version, everything works out. What's that? said in the name of Rabbi Echanan that who's the author of the Mishnah? This is the opinion of the uh, of Rabbi Akiva, the anonymous one. In other words, when when the when Rebbe established the Mishnah, he it was the opinion of Rebbe Kiva that he was quoting, even though he does it anonymously. However, the Chachamim are the ones who say that Bisman has in these days, meaning after the Chorban Abay Yisrael Mestak since we look to this day that the Megillah is read upon to be able to establish Purim in Karin Isa El Bismana. You can only read it on its proper time on the 14th and the 15th. In other words, the Chachamim disagree with Rebbe Akiva only about Bismana Zeh. But in the time when you're Makadosh then they would agree with Rebbe Akiva. And the, 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 the conversation of the Gemara continues different to the way we, we mentioned above, but rather the Gemara continued to say, the people in the canon continued to say, there's also been in the Brisa that supports what, uh, what we're quoting in the name of Rabbi Echanan. And what's the Brisa? Am Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Huda says, Amosai, when our village is allowed to read earlier than the 14th, only Bisman, Shashan Kesiknon, Bisol Shrinadan Mosan, only during the period when the years are fixed properly and the Jewish people are living in their own land. Avo Bisman is there. But nowadays, in the time of the exile, so since people look to this day to establish when Pesach is, and Kerenosa Elabiz Mana, so then we can only read the Megillah in its fixed time, which is why I said before that this is only a theoretical question about reading the Megillah on Tainus Esther, because nowadays we, we never have a case where we will read the Megillah on Tainus Esther because Ms. Um, we only read it on the 14th and the 15th. Um, and also, remember that uh, the way the calendar is fixed these days, so uh, you never have Purim falling out on Shabbos either. So, um, so we never read it earlier or later than the 14th and the 15th. However, as I mentioned, I will look, I will look into it and uh, I will Hashem, come, try to come back with an answer tomorrow. I wish you all a wonderful day. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Rabbi. Rabbi. No problem. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Rabbi.